Back in the day, a trip to the toy store could get you an action figure, a vehicle for your action figure, or even, if you were really lucky, a playset. Sure, you could turn a couch or a cardboard box into any toy line world with a little imagination. But just like the action figures, the playsets are works of art, with a hefty production and R&D cost, often planned for Wave 2, but also easily scrapped. And in today's Ed's Retro Geek Out, we're taking a look at a couple playsets that didn't end up taking up an immense amount of shelf space. Be sure to subscribe for more 80s and 90s toy videos, and let's drop in for some toy history. The year was 1986 when Mattel's Masters of the Universe announced and released their biggest play set for the classic line. Eternia would bring the home of He-Man and Skeletor to living rooms across the world. A true mammoth of a box providing you with multiple towers connected by a monorail. And as always, the toys came from a sketch and they had to be produced into a prototype. And there's probably a bunch more playset prototypes out there that never got made, but what would they have looked like? One of the concepts that was never released is known as the Treehouse playset. Keeping the Snake Mountain and Grayskull style, it would have come with a grapple claw, a drawbridge, blaster platform, and a high tower with a zipline cable. Would this have been something that you would have mounted on a wall or placed on top of a table? Nobody really knows. Too bad there's not a lot more known about this one. Masters of the Universe was always taking the playset a bit further and tried introducing new features with every new one. So when it was about time for Mattel to create a playset for their toy line Food Fighters, they took a couple features along. Food Fighters, combat at its cookiest, with the kitchen commandos and the villain refrigerator rejects battling it out. There was only one place you could store these almost squeaky toy action figures, the fridge. Mattel's 1989 catalog proved that with a little imagination, anything could be a playset. Once an average American refrigerator, this playset has now become the center of the food war conflict. The heroic Brigadier General and his men have transformed it into their headquarters, complete with war room, jail, and lookout posts. When triggered by enemy fire, the refrigerator doors blow off and the crisper door slams shut. Throwing figures out the back, it also fires frozen missiles and has rolling juice can bombs. There's plenty of room for weapon storage, extra weapons, and it also comes with a separate ladder and a landing pad. The playset seems to close for easy storing and carrying it around. And even though some of the figures looked like hotcakes, they just weren't selling as good as hotcakes. So the refrigerator playset stayed unproduced. Playsets have been around for quite some time. I mean, usually came as a total package of small soldiers or cowboys and Indians with their own playing field. You basically had enough with a couple colorful panels as a background to pose your figures in. It took a while before they started making them into plastic with custom toy line sculpts. Kenner's 81 release of the Clash of the Titans movie toy line they had planned the layer playset to be released. This playset would have been 9 inches high and was divided by three sections depicting Medusa's eerie chamber, Calibos' swamp, and the Kraken battlement. There would have been passageways from one section to another, and you could fold it up and dismantle it for shipping. The set would have also included some molded accessories. Calbo's throne is amongst one of the accessories. It seems to be a vinyl fold-up playset, much like the old Mego sets. And definitely a nice addition for the toy line. When you see the Kraken towering next to it, it all made sense. Too bad we can't see the art on the other two sides. The one we do see has some creepy artwork, and it could have probably been a Slayer album cover. Now, there have been attempts to recreate the playset in a cardboard, and now we can get an idea of what the other two sides could have looked like, like Medusa's Chamber and the Kraken side. It was available on eBay for a while, but I can't seem to find it anymore now. Now, let's just follow the Kraken back into the water with Tiger Sharks. <laughs> Tiger Sharks was an LGN toy line with an aquatic theme. The members were humans that could transform into marine hybrids. This one was a follow-up of the successful Thundercats toy line, and just like Thundercats, Tiger Sharks received the same marketing and were accompanied by a cartoon show to push interest with retailers, but it was an upstream battle 
and with low TV ratings and low retailer support, the line didn't get far. Even if anybody wanted to buy them, they were hard to find in stores. So LJN couldn't afford to make many, and a lot of the line was never released. Too bad, because a big ticket item like the Fish Tank playset was looking bright and colorful. And you know, later down the line, it could have been a cool playset to play with your turtles in as well. The Tiger Sharks world was called Watero. They would do research on the Watarians that lived there and served as protectors against evil Thierry, usually from their ship called Sark, which contained the Fish Tank, a device that could be used to power our heroes up to their marine forms. The playset would allow this action as well, with the figures jumping in on top and coming out of the tunnel exit down below. There was also a command station and two areas to control a mounted gun. And while Eljan was deep sea diving with tiger sharks, Kenner had its eyes set to space with silver hawks. All we have here is the concept illustration for a toy playset based on the Hawk Haven we knew from the series. The playset was announced in the Toy Fair catalog of 87, but didn't make it much further. They already had a tough enough time with the price point on the large attack birds. The Hawkhaven playset is the Silverhawks Fortress Against the Evil Mob of Monstar. Now kids can recreate the same Silverhawks fantasy with the Hawkhaven playset. The strategic headquarters for the Silverhawks is a hawk-shaped fortress perched on an asteroid and is featured in every episode of the Silverhawks animated program. The playset opens up and includes a gunner station with a firing missile, an opening entryway, a jail cell for captured villains, a moving elevator purchase for figures, weapon birds, and it also came with an easy to carry case feature. So pretty much ticking off all the right boxes for a good playset. It's a shame we didn't get to see how they would have executed the prototype for this playset, but if they needed a place to crash, the Silverhawks could have sought refuge in the first playset for the Bucky O'Hare toy line if it ever got made. Bucky O'Hare's Righteous Indignation playset. This could have been a very futuristic playset with an interactive design based on Bucky O'Hare's floating diner. You had a planet-type base balancing the spaceship above. You could control the movement by the handle, which also controlled the trigger for shooting gravity-fed missiles. And on top, you had a removable recon pod with two spring-loaded missiles. In another catalog, they did scale the playset down to a vehicle type toy, more in line with what the cartoon representation was of the vehicle, but the first design didn't get lost, it would have come with the same recon pod. Unfortunately, the whole second wave got cancelled by Hasbro, and so did the hopes the Righteous would fly around next to the Toad Croaker once more. And from the Toad Wars, we head into the Skeleton Wars. Back when Skeleton Warriors marched into the battlefields armed with a comic book and cartoon, they too had everything planned for a great toy line and a second wave of toys. The ultimate forces of evil, the army of Merciless, the Skeleton Legion against the last heroic defenders of the light, a family of warrior-born heroes, Skeleton Hunters. This futuristic deadly world had to have a place set, and with the skeletons being the showstoppers, it had to be the Baron's lair. This great thing was meant to be the house these bone-bashing figures would live in. It is the most terrifying place that never unleashed on the toy action figure market. It was set to be released in 1995, but I don't see it in anyone's collection. Baron Von Dark's Skull Fortress had a ton of gruesome detailing and features. The skull opens up revealing a missile launcher and a passageway in. The sights can extend into towers and there's a pod with blasters that can detach itself from the playset. That was very great. Seems like this one hadn't received its final colors or any colors at all really. For Skeleton Warriors, heads had to roll and unfortunately it was their own. Due to poor sales, this playset is now not residing in the toy collections all around the world. And back in the day, it would have definitely been a bone-chilling sculpt to have out on display in any kid's toy room. Now today, we're not the only ones taking a deep dive into history, because history was a big part of Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. There was also a toy line made by Kenner based on a movie and cartoons combining real rock and roll with the fantasy of time travel, and bringing the wild stallions into your home had to come with a playset. It was called Bill and Ted's Historical Playset. The historical playset provides the ultimate in time travel play. This fold-out modular 
playset features six highly interactive historical play scenes from the Bill and Ted movie and animation, including the Old West, a medieval castle, and Bill and Ted's garage soundstage. Features include breakthrough windows, working gallows, and a real drawbridge. It also comes with a removable TV, camcorder, two microphones, receiver amplifier, four hats, and a free rolling skateboard. Now, unfortunately for Bill and Ted's toy line, it was time to face the music and end their bogus journey. Bogus. That was it for this episode, but if you like what you saw, be sure to check out my first video I did on unproduced playsets. I put out weekly videos, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss out on any vintage toy videos. Please leave a like and leave a comment. I really want to know which playset is still on your want list after all these years. And as always, I love to thank all of my supporters on Patreon and you for watching. I really hope to see you in the next video, but until then, you can always follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. I post on there almost every day. So, see you later, toy fans. Bye.